Okay, so uh, what we're going to talk about for about 15 minutes here is uh, a major event that happened one year ago. It was April uh, 20th last year at the uh, IHPBA meeting, uh, uh, which was regionally held in our area of the world, uh, the Americas, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, this uh, has, was not just a single day event, it's actually been a three year process. And I come here today to basically um, review that with you and tell you what it's all about, what it means, and where it's going in the future. So uh, this was uh, deemed a state-of-the-art conference, and uh, it was uh, basically a charge from the IHPBA strategic planning process that they wanted in their research uh, arm to have uh, a major consensus conference or start to develop that as part of their meetings. And uh, with the meeting coming up in 2016, there was an opportunity to uh, do such a thing. Uh, I was the scientific program director for the overall meeting and uh, basically was given the charge to uh, put on this process. And it was very evident right off the bat that uh, from, as you can see from this slide right here, that minimally invasive pancreatic surgery was a hot topic that was blossoming and developing, controversial, uh, and really simmering uh, to the point that it uh, deserved the attention of this uh, conference. And you can see here how whenever something's going up in an exponential process like that, uh, something uh, big is happening. So this was the substrate that we chose and it was very easy to go down that line with that. The planning process uh, started uh, really about two years prior when that, sign when that uh, strategic planning meeting happened and then we got our um, horses together for this, and it was about an 18-month uh, lead time to actually put on this show. Uh, and in effect, it, uh, we were able to bring together a member uh, organizing committee um, from uh, 10 nations around the world, and the purpose here was to be very balanced uh, and make this a very international process. We saw immediately that we would have efficiencies of scale for pr uh, producing such such conference like this, and that would be by joining it to the major IHPBA meeting, which was 3,000 some uh, delegates that happens every two years in different parts of the world. So we were able to piggyback onto those availabilities uh, in terms of conference space, money, uh, speakers, and bringing people together in the same place at the same time. Now originally the idea was to have a consensus conference, that's what the organization wanted. Uh, but uh, we uh, morphed this into a state-of-the-art conference because basically we realized that there was a paucity of high-level data in the field. Uh, we wanted this to be basically a nascent uh, event that was a springboard for future endeavors uh, in the field. And we wanted to take a pulse of what was going on. All this activity and uh, energy was going on, but we needed to figure out where it was going and where it's been. Ultimately, we were able to bring together 450 uh, attendees to this conference, which is very robust for one of these uh, consensus type conference uh, processes. And it's a testament to, to uh, having it with the international meeting. Uh, this included 50 faculty, including the 15 or 16 um, organizing uh, group. Uh, and this included non-surgeons. We went out and got uh, thought uh, peer leaders in the field and thought leaders uh, in different elements of surgery and science, actually, uh, to contribute to this. Ultimately, uh, there are about 400 people uh, not on the faculty who uh, participated in this. Uh, the important thing here to realize is that we did this completely without industry support. We were very um, specific that we did not want any forms of bias uh, available to this. And this again spoke to the fact that we had great uh, buy-in by the IHPBA and the AHPBA for our financials. And ultimately this conference uh, went off with uh, actually developing a profit uh, despite the fact that we had not a dollar from any industry involved. So how do we get this done? Well, uh, I have to acknowledge uh, Dave Kuby, who is in the audience today, uh, who uh, basically went hand in hand with me from the beginning to launch this. And what happened is essentially, I, as the scientific director of the meeting, I was given the, the charge to do this, but the research uh, group also uh, appointed a leader, a co-leader, and we wanted someone who was unbiased, but yet very involved and knowledgeable uh, and recognized, and Dave was a natural choice for that. And what came from this is uh, a uh, new friendship 
and a new respect amongst our, ourselves and the, the whole group of Dave and what he uh, brought to the table for us. Here's the group uh, that uh, we brought together. So uh, North Americans, South Americans, Europeans, and Asians. Um, uh, the, this uh, was very challenging because to get together for the planning group, we had to find a time that would uh, satisfy the whole world. Uh, our uh, leadership group uh, from administration standpoint was uh, the IHPBA group out of Glasgow, Scotland. So they brought us together uh, in a time that sort of uh, uh, balanced uh, the world. Uh, but this group really was brought together because uh, of the balance. There are open pancreatic surgeons. There are clearly uh, uh, minimally invasive surgeons here. There are laparoscopists. There are robotic surgeons. There are also thought concept people in uh, cost and value and research and the likes. So we had a great um, uh, group uh, leading into this. We came upon this agenda for the day. We found different themes that were really um, driving the field at this point. So first of all, we had an introduction with a couple of uh, important things. We wanted to, first of all, set the tone and say what is important in pancreatic surgery in general in terms of metrics and outcomes that we should be looking at for our research in this in the future. We next realized that there was a, a huge issue with, with terminology in the field, and I'll get into these later on. Uh, we reviewed the re results and we actually launched autonomously a international survey of uh, pancreatic surgeons about their use of uh, ma minimally invasive techniques. We then went into a module on distal pancreatectomy, which is more mature and robust, and we then took that into the uh, more fledgling pancreatic oduodenectomy field. We were very uh, interested in understanding what is out there on cost, value, and quality of life. And uh, we were actually able to bring some uh, top people, including patient advocates, uh, patient advocacy groups uh, together to help us with that. And then probably the highlight of the day, I think it really was the, the most forward thinking and, and uh, best part was the training and credentialing, training education credentialing part, uh, where we really wanted to dive into how this is going to be um, taught and disseminated down the line. And then we wrapped it up with uh, what would the future uh, of uh, MIPR be with research um, to make it uh, better understood. We also were able to bring, bring in some uh, very robust and contentious at sometimes panel sessions on distals, whipples, uh, the training process and research. And uh, you can see some uh, added people, including Horacio, who were contributing to that. Uh, these, were, uh, these lasted anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half long. Um, and we, this is where we were able to bring uh, a more balanced faculty from around the world uh, to the table. Uh, they were, um, again, uh, representing uh, open doctors, um, minimally invasive, as well as people who did both. So we really um, uh, had a good balance with that. All of this and all, all the talks, but in particular, these panel sessions are really good. And they can be found at the IHPBA website through the MyHPB uh, portal of that. So, and some of these things are actually available uh, if you're not a member of the IHPBA to be seen as well. So the, there is enduring uh, content here and a lot of thought leader uh, stuff going on there. Here's more enduring value. We thought that this would be a worthless event if we could not disseminate it around the, its findings around the world. Um, to that end, Dave and I have been actually giving a talk like this to many of the societies internationally uh, in the last six months and, and going forward. But we really wanted to get this down on paper and be out there for everyone to see. And we had this great relationship with uh, James Garden, Professor Garden from um, Edinburgh, who is the editor-in-chief of HPB. And we're really uh, thrilled to tell you that this month, right now and uh, just a week ago, the full series of events from this uh, conference came out uh, in HPB. And you can get each of these papers. I'm going to highlight them as we go through here. So the day started out with key outcomes, and uh, uh, we could think of no better person than an illustrious uh, international surgeon, Claudio Bassi. He's the, sort of the father of pancreatic fistula, if you're you know, certainly aware of, of his um, consensus uh, co uh, statement on that. Um, we asked Claudio basically to put out a, an editorial type of piece 
uh, which uh, defines what do, what should we really care about. Do we care about blood loss during a case? Do we care about urinary tract infections? Is it about survival, et cetera, et cetera? And he was able to sort of um, categorize these for us as well as tell us how to optimally go about achieving them. And this paper actually talks about the process of bringing together a multidisciplinary pancreatic team to achieve best results. We then moved on to what I think is the, the most important thing to come out of the meeting personally, and that is the standardized terminology for this. And this was led by Andre Montagnini from Brazil, uh, as well as the full organizing group. We all put our contributions into this. And essentially what you see here is all the various uh, ways that these operations are being uh, described with very nebulous terms and, and subjective terms along the way, some objective, but it's just a potpourri of, of uh, things and it really makes it very hard to compare uh, the uh, operations and the research across. Things that came across from this is that we wanted to avoid unclear terms, things like total, pure, hybrid, mini laparotomy. These all are, are basically in the eye of the beholder and, and can be very nebulous. We wanted to link methods by using the terminology with. And we also wanted to describe the conversion process with the phrase converted to. Okay, and that, there's a lot of talk about what, what constitutes a conversion. We also wanted to designate a conversion as an, a non-urgent or an urgent situation. And this basically shows um, the sort of framework that you'll see in the paper that helps you understand how it should be optimally uh, described. This is all developed in a Delphi process amongst the group and took over a year to come to our consensus on this kind of stuff. But it was pretty straightforward and streamlined once we got going with it. The key take home points about this session was that the current terminology used to describe MIPR lacks precision. It's making it difficult to uh, compare existing research reports systematically. And again, the Delphi process was used, which is uh, sort of an advanced method to get uh, opinions together. Um, and the steering committee proposed this simple system for the future. I highly uh, suggest that you get a hold of that paper and look at it. Now, the next thing we did is from uh, scratch at the beginning, we decided we got to know what's going on in the world, and, and we wanted this baseline as we went into the meeting to what's going on, uh, on in terms of application and opinions about minimally invasive pancreatic surgery. So this was put together by the Dutch group, by Mark Besselink, who's uh, really a star these days in, in terms of um, outcomes uh, development in pancreatic surgery. And he was able to bring um, this uh, survey together, modeled after something he had already done in Europe. Uh, this brought, uh, basically was disseminated through all the major societies that do pancreatic surgery, including the Pancreas Club. Um, responses were sought from both open and MIS surgeons. Uh, we wanted to know what each side of the fence thought about this. There were 61 questions involved across a spectrum of uh, topics that we actually incorporated into the meeting. And, Answers from this were brought as baseline uh, value to the uh, meeting uh, panels. Uh, we should uh, acknowledge Joni and Thies down in the right lower quadrant who are young students, young surgeons, who basically uh, developed this and ultimately, I'll tell you later, did the systematic reviews for everything that we did. Uh, what you see in this is the worldwide response, 430 people, about 21% uh, uh, were people who did not do MIS. So we got a lot of buy-in from the, from the crowd who is enthusiastic about it, but we got some um, balancing aspect there otherwise. Uh, this is the sort of sample, the kind of question we were asking for uh, minimally invasive Whipple. Uh, if you're not performing it, why? Okay, and you can see that the total, and you can see that 311 people uh, were not uh, performing it for the reason. On the other hand, uh, the, about a quarter of people were performing this, and you can see the reasons, uh, uh, the types of, of uh, Whipples that they were performing in their approaches that way. So this just sort of gives you a flavor for what that was like. The key take homes from this aspect was that uh, the uh, results were um, uh, from the survey said it considered uh, MIPR to be a, I'm sorry, a distal pancreatectomy to be a appropriate alternative to open 
for surgical pathology of the left pancreas, including all pathologies. Um, Whipple, on the other hand, is still in the investigational phase, and nearly all of the survey participants would welcome systematic training uh, in this and would also support an international effort to collect data on this topic. That drove us to the data-driven portion of the day. So we wanted to know what really has happened so far in the last 20 years since this was um, uh, first described. Uh, so there were two components, a, a distal section and a Whipple section. And what you see in the distal section is out, the basic peri perioperative outcomes as well as a cancer-focused talk. And finally, a very interesting talk about how do we select people to do this and, and, and not to do uh, minimally invasive surgery on by Peter Allen. When we went to the Whipple session, we again talked about the perioperative aspects and cancer. And then we had a very interesting session of the experiential comparison of the various techniques, including hybrid, laparoscopic, robotic, and open approaches to doing a Whipple. And we gave pros and cons for each of them. And I think it was pretty uh, evident that there's a, there's a value to each of these different approaches in, in different ways. This led to two papers. Uh, the distal paper uh, was uh, uh, led by Bard Rossak from uh, Norway. And then the Whipple paper, uh, which uh, both of these include systemic reviews by uh, the Dutch group of, the of the, all the content and knowledge on data to this point, to that point a year ago. Mike Kendrick wrote uh, this very important paper here. It's got a lot of uh, concepts going on that are novel. Um, the summary, uh, basically, I, I won't go through it. It's not the point of this meeting today, but basically showing that we were able to go com compare open to, to laparoscopic and, and robotic for perioperative and cancer outcomes. Take-home points, there's a growing body of data that distal shows some um, uh, uh, perioperative outcomes such as intraoperative blood loss and hospital stay that are improved uh, compared with open. Oncologic outcomes between the two uh, for malignancy appear similar as well, but the data are uh, still quite limited on that topic. Data regarding the perioperative and oncological outcomes for minimally invasive Whipple is less mature than that of distal, although the emerging data suggests it's safe and similar outcomes uh, can be achieved uh, at organized high volume centers. And there was a, there was a real uh, scrutiny of that is uh, to who's doing this and where the better outcomes are being achieved. Now, the next natural part from this is to take off, well, what does this cost and what's the value to uh, a center, the patient, and society? And Kevin Conlon, uh, who has a very strong financial background, um, uh, brought uh, th uh, this to the table and wrote this paper. This, too, included a systematic review. Uh, what we found for cost data is that it's very limited. It's single center, it has selection bias, it has no accounting for uh, the investment in the program development, et cetera. Um, the distal uh, data appears to be, uh, it, it appears that distal appears to be a cost-effective means of doing this. It's impossible to assess Whipples at this point, and it's challenging to assess costs between centers and particularly countries in this international process. The conversion of dollars and euros and the likes is very hard. Um, there was actually no true analysis of the concept of value uh, uh, brought up in the literature. Safir Venunu gave us a great talk on this uh, from Montreal, uh, indicating that value is a different story than dollars and cents. And he uh, takes the background of Michael Porter, uh, who he learned from at Harvard Business School, and brought that to the, the field to explain that this is really where we should be looking in the future as we uh, judge this. So far, no data on that. We were privileged to also bring in Julie Fleshman. She's the CEO and director of PANCAN, the largest patient uh, advocacy group for pancreatic uh, patients. And we also had Jane Holt there from the National Pancreas Foundation later in the day. Julie brought us some illumination about what her, uh, she's learned from the patients. And uh, here's two quotes from her, basically. The patient with pancreatic cancer is asking for information on who can do the operation well and what are my chances of survival. And she made this very clear, too. Currently, few patients with cancer are asking about laparoscopy. The technique is not trumped by the disease 
yet, it, or is trumped by the disease so far at this point in time. But she said that in doing this, this really brought up um, avenues of thought for her and her group to take back to patients and try to investigate this deeper. The key take home points from the cost value part is that early cost comparisons of MIPR and OPEN suggest cost effic efficiency for distal when compared to OPEN. But more data are required to talk about um, pancreatic duodenectomy and robotic surgery to this point. Existing cost comparisons of uh, MIPR and OPEN are limited by single center bias and value assessments are necessary. And what I didn't talk about yet is the fact that uh, there's really no good quality of life investigations going on and Vic Valenovich brought his uh, knowledge base on that to the uh, uh, table as well. And then uh, getting towards the back end of the day with the training and education process. Uh, Melissa Ho uh, Hogue from uh, Pittsburgh, who's here in the audience, uh, really uh, took uh, this uh, by the horns and, and took it all the way for us, including a, a fantastic paper here. Um, she brought, or first of all, this was uh, introduced by Paul Hansen, who brought this data to us showing uh, from the AHPBA uh, uh, training role, uh, uh, role that uh, how many cases are being done. So this is distal pancreatectomy done by fellows in the HPBA programs around the country, okay? And so you can see it's a kaleidoscope here of involvement between, uh, and ratios between open, laparoscopic, and robotic. You have one, two programs there do none of it. There are places that have a uh, strength in robotic only. Some are doing a little bit of it all, et cetera. So this is what you're getting out there at the training process, the the young uh, people are coming out with this. And you should also take a look here. The average number of cases done in your training process is 17 distal pancreatectomies, period. All right? That's not going to eclipse learning curves in that one-year focus process. Let's go and look at uh, Whipples. Okay? So here you are. The average number of cases they're doing is 30 in that process. Uh, and look at the um, difference between the distals in terms of the application of minimally invasive processes. And then you can see over half the programs don't do it at all. So again, this is lagging and um, has a long way to go in terms of uh, development. The next part of the, um, this session was uh, Oliver Varban, um, who is a bariatric surgeon, actually, um, uh, well aligned with Justin Dimmick's group. And he came to talk to us about video assessment of performance and how this is going to roll into getting people better as you learn techniques and helping people get uh, better faster. Next, uh, Melissa took us uh, down the line of some of her work at Pittsburgh on how, to, how they've uh, trained robotically. Uh, and she brings a, a multi-step process. Uh, I think it's up to five or six steps at this point for how they go across, uh, about this. And you can see across the uh, spectrum here where this goes. So this is their curriculum there. And then she brought in the idea of uh, how the learning curve may be accelerated as we're getting on with more elements of training involved. And you can see that uh, she compares to her mentor, Herb Zay, uh, who is tremendously important for this conference development. Amer uh, Zugret, who's in the middle, uh, then preceded her and then um, Melissa there at the bottom showing how the different elements have decreased sequentially the um, proficiency curve for, for uh, training in this for Whipple. This is then brought on by um, uh, Mark Besselink uh, who is really pushing the process in Europe and the nice thing about the Netherlands where they are is it's centralized, it's small, it's about the size of Maryland and they basically, the government has basically centralized the healthcare process to the point where everything is uh, manageable as a group in the, in the country. Uh, there are about 17 or 18 centers, I believe, around the country, and they all feed in their data, and they all follow um, centralized, uh, reproducible, standardized processes. So he brought out the idea of how they are actually uh, uh, training people centrally in the country and disseminating it out through the rest of the country. I know there's been a lot of people going to visit him and um, uh, to see how this has gone down. His group has now led to what's probably going to be the next best thing coming through for us, and that is randomized control trials 
on uh, both distal pancreatectomy and the Whipple procedure. So be uh, alert for them coming home. What we got out of this session is that current training paradigms from MIPRA are inconsistent and inadequate. Examples of successful uh, teaching programs exist and should be modeled and disseminated to the general pancreatic surgery community. How we do that is yet to be seen. Finally, the last component was research. We really don't feel like we're going to understand this better until we can get objective data that really uh, sets in uh, how people are doing, good, bad, or ugly, from this. And this was uh, led by uh, a world-renowned uh, surgical researcher, Jeff Barkin, uh, and uh, he really has a passion for this. Uh, this, too, um, was very involved for a full year, and it's going to go places in the future. His session basically started off with the, discu the uh, discussion about how the minimally invasive surgery for the pancreas is uh, following the ideal framework for surgical innovation, and ultimately the idea that a registry is probably going to be the best way to approach this data analysis. However, we did have talks talking about if we could, uh, how and if we could perform RCTs in this by Bill Fisher. Steve Strasberg uh, talked about the uh, continuing enduring value of comparative trials in some ways. Henry Pitt brought together the administrative database process and how we could uh, maybe plug into using something like ACS NISQIP. And then we had Gianna Davidson and, and Jane Holt talking to us about their um, experiences with developing uh, robust, uh, sophisticated registries and how we might be able to even plug into their um, models. Take home points from the research is that uh, research to attain best level of evidence is challenging. Uh, at this point, MIPR is growing. Uh, a growing aspect of pancreatic surgery has entered the phase 2A of the ideal framework for incorporating surgical innovation in practice. The feasibility of developing effective RCTs is dubious. That's the, the, the thought of most of the people at this meeting. But registry development has the potential to add to the field. And we felt that the time is ripe to do that, and we have gone through the um, uh, early stages of developing this through the IHPBA uh, in an international registry. I'll uh, conclude here by saying that uh, this talk that I just gave is summarized in this paper here, which is the overall, we call it the proceedings from the meeting, um, that is, it sort of kicks off the whole packet of uh, papers in HPB. We hope you'll um, plug in to see who, who uh, specifically was involved with the meeting. And also, again, you can get the video content on the MyHPB portal of IHPBA. Almost every one of the talks from the meeting, for it was about a nine-hour meeting, is available uh, for you to uh, uh, look at. I'd uh, just like to bring together at the end, here's the organizing committee. I want you to see all the, the smiles, the happy faces. This is the dinner we had at the, um, after the event uh, that night. Uh, it really was a um, very intense and um, exhaustive effort to get to the meeting. And now we have continued to work together for the last year to put the papers together and start to work on the registry. And this is spawning a new uh, energy for where to go next. Okay, so where are we going to go next with this? The registry is being developed. We're speaking and, and getting you this content out through the, the papers, but the next moves are uh, uh, thoughts of bringing together a sort of a specialized society for uh, pancreatic minimally invasive surgery and probably um, a follow-up meeting in a year or two down the line to recapture where the, this momentum. Uh, you'll see that what we did at this meeting was not technically oriented. We specifically did not go down the line of making this a how I do it, show and tell kind of meeting. There is certainly a role for that, and this will continue to develop and, and be able to help people learn throughout. Uh, but we wanted this to be a higher level, sort of taking the pulse process, and we think we achieved that. I'll be happy to talk about this later in the session. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.